Hello, it's me, the true and honest Shootique. I've been messing around with quite a few different amp builds in my quest to find the one. I need something that handles big chimey cleans while offering up gigantic smooth distortion. The one also needs to be light enough that it can be easily transported to gigs and recording sessions. I was starting to think I couldn't have all these features in one amp, but then I built this, the Trinity Amps OSD. Big cleans, check. Way huge smooth distortion, you bet baby. Playing this amp is like driving a sports car. It's super responsive and touch dynamic. It's a little hard to explain, but I feel like it writes its own music. The Trinity OSD feels alive. The OSD is a lower power version of Howard Alexander Dumble's 50 watt overdrive special. It's perfect for small to medium gigs and really shines for recording. I can even pick it up without getting a hernia. The amp has two channels that can be selected via foot switch, clean and overdrive. There's also a foot switchable boost at your disposal. The OSD leverages a solid state rectifier making the amp tight with very little sag. For power tubes, you have the option of either fixed bias 6V6s or cathode biased 6L6s which provide 22 or 33 watts respectively. It's a pretty slick setup. All you have to do is change the tubes, flip the switch, and make a bias adjustment. The amp uses 12AX7s for the phase inverter and preamp tubes. Hey, listen to me. I'm not sponsored or monetized, so everything happening on this channel is paid for out of my own pocket. I've started a Patreon for anyone who's kind enough to help support the channel. For five bucks, you get access to the stem tracks for each new episode and the ability to vote on which builds you want to see next. For upcoming non-kit builds, I'll also provide detailed information on parts sourcing to save you the headache and brain damage induced by having to find all this stuff. This includes a Fairchild 660 that I'm starting to gather parts for now. Okay, that's that. Back to the bench. Today, we're going to go over a brief history of the Trinity OSD, look at the controls on the unit, and then talk about the build. We'll be listening to arrangements featuring the OSD along the way. At the end, I'll give my final thoughts on the amp. We gotta try something with distortion, right? It's in the name of the amp, for Doug's sake. Hola, senor. Can I get some insulin? Hola, senor. You sell pants there. The Trinity OSD is based on the Dumble Overdrive Special, or ODS. The Dumble is a two-channel amplifier which has a clean and overdrive channel. The amp uses cascading gain stages where the clean channel feeds the gain stage of the overdrive channel. There's a ton of variation between ODS units. Dumble made them all by hand and tailored them to the musician he was building them for. The Trinity OSD is built around the 1984 Dumble ODS number 124. There's a wealth of information posted across the web about the 124, and I'll be posting credit where credit is due on screen as we make our way through a very brief history of this particular unit. The 124 is a Dumble which has been degooped so circuit perverts can look at all of its private parts. I couldn't find a nice shot showing the entirety of the Dumble 124 circuit, but I did find a few close-ups of the circuit on the Dumble archive. The 124 was modified at some point to have a Skyliner EQ. I have no idea what that means, but Talbany from Amp Garage can help. This stack has a bass knee of around 80 Hz and gives a slightly harder attack on the bass notes. The middle control is centered at or around 400 Hz as this provides the more pronounced upper mids that many folks talk about. Skyliners in general also used a negative feedback circuit between the plate and the grid of V1B. The cap and the resistor on the bass pot are known as a James configuration. This is a predecessor to the Baxendall EQ. The 124 originally had a deep switch, but this was later modified to a mid switch like what you see on the Trinity. 
folks say the mid switch is less muffled than the deep one. Modifications were also made to the overdrive input network, level pot, preamp plate resistors, and clean stage cathode resistors. For a full overview of the Dumble ODS-124, check out IC Racer's thread on Amp Garage. There's a link in the description. All right, back to the Trinity Amp. The OSD is a single input amp with a control set that provides a lot of options without getting too overwhelming. All parameters apply to both normal and OD channels unless noted. Working our way from left to right, first we have the volume. This adjusts the signal strength of the tone stack and primarily impacts the clean channel. You can pull this pot out to engage bright mode. This adds a really nice sparkle to both the normal and OD channels. It has the most impact at lower volumes. The mid switch will fatten things up and it pairs nicely with the overdrive channel. The jazz rock toggle changes the overall frequency response and voicing of the amp. Rock has a fatter mid range and a deeper, spongier bottom end. Jazz tightens up the bottom end and adjusts the contour of the mid range giving the amplifier more of a hi-fi response. They both sound great and you should play around with this toggle to find exactly what your song needs. Treble, middle, and bass work exactly like you would expect. The overdrive section has two controls, level and ratio. Level is the amount of gain or distortion and ratio can be used to balance the OD channel with the clean channel. In practice, the ratio control acts much like a volume for the OD channel. The preamp boost in the overdrive channel can only be activated with the foot switch. Without the foot switch, the two effects will remain bypassed. On the back of the amp, you have a trim control which adjusts the signal strength sent to the first tube in the OD channel. Lower is more touch sensitive and higher is more compressed with complex harmonics. The Trinity OSD includes a passive effects loop which can be upgraded to a buffered tube effects loop. This is a great spot for reverbs, delays, and other modulation effects. More on this later. The impedance selector allows you to use the amp with a variety of different speakers. Let's listen to something that leverages the effects loop. I'm using a Teffy Golden Era. For the record, this beats the piss out of the Chase Bliss Gen Loss. It's actually useful and it sounds fantastic. Side note, don't run out and buy one of these on reverb. They're good, but they aren't as good as the prices that I'm seeing on there. Wait till Teffy makes more or someone traces the circuit so you can make your own. This build can get a little complex in some areas, but overall I would give it an intermediate ranking. What keeps it from journeying into advanced territory is the insanely thorough 120 page build guide on the Trinity website. This paired with the wiring diagram, schematic, and the build photographs should provide you with ample coverage when questions pop up. While working on my build, I did notice a few minor discrepancies between the photos provided on the Trinity website, wiring diagram, and build doc. For instance, the switch connected to the output transformer primaries, which allows you to switch between 6V6 and 6L6 operation, is wired opposite on the wiring diagram as it is in the build pictures linked on the support page. This isn't a huge deal, but you'll need to understand which way to flip the switch on your build for correct 6V6 or 6L6 operation. Another difference I saw was in the presence control configuration in the wiring diagram versus the build pictures. Whenever I encountered any differences, I used the wiring diagram and the build doc as my source of truth. There are also a few items that aren't covered in the manual that are worth mentioning. Things can get tight on the eyelet board once all the components are populated. There are two wires that you're going to want to solder on from the back of the eyelet board before placing the board inside the chassis. First is this wire running from a pair of 220K resistors 
to the center of the bias pot. The other is the NFB wire. Solder it under the 4K7 3 watt resistor here to the 4 ohm lug of the impedance selector switch. The metal eyelets for the 5K phase inverter trim pot were missing on my eyelet board. I was able to solder everything directly to the legs of the potentiometer, but this isn't ideal. I've let Trinity know about the missing eyelets, so hopefully this won't happen in the future. I also installed the optional tube effects loop in my build. The loop uses a Russian 6N17B subminiature tube, which is pretty neat. The loop comes pre-populated and fits perfectly in the existing send and return holes on the chassis. There's a dedicated build guide for this with a wiring diagram showing how it should be wired into the OSD. Make sure you account for this when building the amp. In particular, you're going to need to think about how the heater wires from V3 will connect the loop and then back to V2. I went way overboard with the tube selection on this amp. For the power tubes, I have NOS Tungsol 6V6s. For V1, which is the clean channel, I have a NOS RCA with short gray plates. I got these tubes from Greg over at High Test. You can call Greg up and he'll talk to you about tubes for as long as you want. He's really knowledgeable and highly reputable. He'll help you select something that's perfect for any amp you're building. Greg said something funny that's always stuck with me about NOS tubes. He said, where do all these companies keep finding all the new old stock tubes that are missing their original boxes? That's a damn good question, Greg. Really gets the noggin joggin. Everything from high test comes tested and in the original packaging. The V2 overdrive preamp tube is a NOS short plate Mullard 12AX7A. For the phase inverter, I have a new production Tungsol 12AX7. Why new stock for the phase inverter? Well, I had to draw the line someplace. I'm not made of money. This head cabinet is from Trinity Amps. Make sure you ask them to prefit the trim bar and chassis to the cabinet before shipping. The chassis slides in like a drawer with the mounting holes on top. This design makes it challenging to determine where the holes for the mounting bolts should be drilled. I had to drill my own, which was a pain, but oh well. Everything turned out fine in the end. For my speaker setup, I purchased this beautiful Teal TL806 cabinet from Moon Custom Cabinetry. The TL806 is a closed back, reflex style cabinet which emulates the sound of a much larger cabinet. The removable port provides a sloping, gradual low frequency roll off when in place. The cab is loaded with an Electrovoice EVM12L. These are the speakers that Howard Alexander Dumble himself used in his builds. I think the idea here was he wanted to pair his amps with a reliable speaker that had plenty of headroom so the amp itself could do all the talking. The speaker itself doesn't add a whole lot of tonal characteristics and you won't come anywhere near the 200 watts the speaker can handle using the OSD. While the birch ply construction of the cabinet is quite light, the EVM12L weighs close to 19 pounds, making this cabinet surprisingly heavy. Hey, look at me. Here's another flavor of distortion. <laughs> The OSD is now my primary amp. I've built plenty of things that made me smile, but this thing actually brings me joy. I think the OSD has something to offer everyone. It's a tight package that has a fantastic clean section and distortion that's just perfect. The build itself comes with the best components, ensuring it will last a lifetime. The ability to switch between 22 and 33 watts makes the amp even more versatile. The amp sounds solid at very low volumes, so you can probably get away with it as a practice amp. The problem is, you're going to want to turn that volume knob up. There's just no denying that louder always sounds better. The amp would excel at small and medium gigs. If you opt for a teal style cabinet with an EVM12L, you could fit this thing in the passenger seat of a two-door sedan. Just make sure you lift with the knees. 
I'm looking forward to when Trinity makes the entirety of their DIY catalog available again. You can be sure that I'll be building something else from them. I give the Trinity OSD the Big Chungus Award for Excellency in Amp Design. Walmart is hell, yeah, Walmart is hell, Walmart is hell, yeah, Walmart is hell. Oh, no.